Dr. Mark Changizi here with your Science Moment. Today I'm going to talk about why I don't wear a motorcycle helmet when I ride. I mean, I sometimes do on long trips on the highway. It can be really gusty and windy and, and uh, it's difficult to see properly uh, when the wind is 70 miles per hour in your face. Um, however, under most circumstances at lower speeds, uh, I tend not to wear uh, a helmet. Uh, and minimize the amount of gear generally that I wear. And one might say, isn't that crazy? It's extremely dangerous uh, to be motorcycling. Don't you want to wear gear uh, in a particular helmet? Now, let's focus on a helmet uh, for, this, for starters. Let me give you an example in terms of the evolution of, of animals and why they put their brain in the head. And I'm gonna bring this back to motorcycles in a minute. Now. Most animals, forget about humans who sort of stand upright and we don't lead with our head in quite the same way, but all of the other animals who have brains have them in the head. And so they're moving around the world leading with their head in which sits their brain. Now their brain is the most important part of their body and you could imagine that the best place to put it would be in let's say the rib cage. Let's stick it someplace really safe all the way over here um, and not out in the leading part of the animal that's bumping into things. But the reason that you want your most important organ, your brain, out in front and potentially colliding with things and taking upon that kinds of extra risks is because by virtue of having the brain in the head, um, you end up with incredibly short wiring in terms of all of the wires that have to get to all of the senses. All of the senses are disproportionately in your head. You know, 90, per 90 plus percent of all of the nerve endings are in your head, in your eyes, your nose, your mouth. All, all of these things are up there in your ears, right? So if you, if you pulled it all the way back, you'd have to, all of this massive wire having to make its way all the way up to, the, to where the preponderance of senses are. There's a tremendous amount of wire, a tremendous waste of space in terms of building and, and just filling up space that you don't need to if you can just put the brain right next to where most of the senses in fact are, which is in the head. But the other side effect of this is that you end up with short temporal delays. You won't, don't have the long delays. What would it be? You know, think about the long delays. Oh, I see something, and then it has to get sent all the way down, you know, taking 200 milliseconds, 300 milliseconds, maybe even longer to get all the way down to the brain, and then you know, sending out to the, to the motor system to respond. The perceptual delays will be much longer than they are when the brain is in the head. So in the trade-off between safety for the brain, on the one hand, and short perceptual delays, evolution favors short perceptual delays. They want to have quick responses, quick reactivity, so that you can navigate the world and interact and do all the acrobatic dynamic things that we do. Now, what's the similarity between, or what's the connection between all of this and the evolution of a brain and the head and the leading part of the animal and motorcycles and helmets? Now, when you wear most helmets, they dull your senses. They dull your senses. Now you can put some kind of skull caps that just sit up on top and don't really dull anything for the most part. But most of these motorcycle helmets that are actually potentially protecting you are covering your ears, um, they're, they're over the, your eyes, so you're losing perceptual field and your visual perceptual field. It's not like it's blocking none of your, of, of your far periphery. You're, you're blocking some of your far, far periphery. Um, if they have the stuff in front, then you're not able to see as far down. You end up with certain kinds of glare. Anytime that you've got this stuff in front of you, you end up with these kinds of glare, which is preventing you from seeing properly. You end up with sort of, so your ears are muffled, your eyes are, are, are losing um, their full acuity that you get under normal circumstances. Um, even overly dressing up. I'm, I'm in Miami, I don't have to wear much. Um, in other cities, of course, it's just freezing. You have to wear stuff. But the more that your skin shows, your skin is a wind sense. You're sensing the wind by virtue of the wind passing through you. These are wind sensors. And you have more little hair, you have more little hairs all over your body than you do have retinal ganglion neurons in your eye for seeing. You're filled with the, and so, you know, this is how fish, for example, fish have these lateral line systems with these little hairs inside their, their skin that, that's able to sense the currents so that they can, you know, school, they can sense predators coming to them. Same thing, we use these things to detect the uh, wind judging our own speed, judging nearby cars and the relationship to them. And our ears, we're able to hear the other cars, we're able, able to hear the echo location of ourselves when we pass things. All of these things are, we're not consciously aware of. All of these things we're not consciously aware of, but we utilize all of these things. 
in, so in general, in terms of the trade-off between safety um, for my head and having my senses at their maximal performance, I want my senses at their maximal performance. I would prefer to not get in an accident at all by virtue of having all my senses working perfectly than be handicapped in terms of my ability to perceive my, you know, my surroundings. And then I get into an accident and yeah, I've got a helmet on, but I have a, I have a greater chance of getting into an accident. And, and, and this is especially so when you're lane splitting in places like Miami, where all through, you know, you're, as you're driving through the city, you're in, in very complicated, fast changing environments with cars that are mostly not seeing you. Right? You need to be constantly aware of where they are at all times. Anything over your head dulls your ability to see these and puts me at risk, which is why I don't do it. Um, uh, if you enjoy this sort of thing, keep your eyes open because my seventh book is finished called Motorcycle Mind. And uh, there's some, I haven't decided on a publisher yet, uh, but Motorcycle Mind is the next thing that's coming out in maybe a year or more, I'm not sure exactly when. And topics like this will come up in Motorcycle Mind. And if you haven't gotten a copy of Dr. Tim Barber and my Expressly Human, get a copy today. There's your science moment.